I'm Carter Snow, and uh, I like to be called uh, the Grand Funk Master around here at Ironwood, just because we're trying to really funk this place up. Uh, we're here at Ironwood Cidery in Niagara-on-the-Lake, beautiful Niagara-on-the-Lake, always sunny here. And you're, uh, you're connected to a winery, or you are a winery, and tell us a little bit about what's happening right now here. Uh, we're connected to Sunnybrook Winery, and we're actually building a new facility, becoming like a mecca and a bigger cider house. And we're kind of pushing away from the fruit wine slowly and moving more into the cider, just because like it's such a niche market and it's a, it's a hard avenue to kind of work. And like cider is such a booming industry in Ontario, and so we really want to like get our foot in it now and like just keep going with it in forward strides. And uh, we noted that you are doing some big construction. What is it that's happening right now? Uh, we're actually building a new 9,000 square foot building. It's going to house like 35,000 square foot of like just retail space and sit down. It'll be a nice, beautiful patio that sits 150 people. We'll have live music. We're going to get some more concrete tanks, get some more oak, kind of like large scale it up, try and like start pushing a lot more commercial volume, but still like having our premium craft focus on like our more artisanal small batch products. Yeah, and we'll come, we'll come back to that because you're, you're, you're new here, right? Yes, I am new here, yeah. So it's kind of my first role as a cider maker here. I graduated at Niagara College a year and a half ago and was working in the wine industry at a Ravine Vineyard, which is like an ultra premium winery in St. David's. Took a lot of like minimal intervention practices from that and like took a lot of skills and lessons from like the winemaking team there of Benny and Marty and like they really like opened my mind and like showed me what the true expression of terroir is and like I kind of want to try chasing that with like artisanal like Ontario ciders and stuff like that single varietals and everything so so tell me a little bit about the offerings right now that you have and I guess you're maybe aiming towards some new things as well uh currently what we're like offering is our original we have a tart cherry on tap and then a dry hop and within the next week we're coming out with a bone dry or a cider zero kind of our take on like the absolute bare minimum of sugar but still be refreshing and like crisp in a way that people are going to want to palate it and it's still appley flavored because it's like I find like a big issue with dry cider is is like you take away the apple characteristic when you ferment apple juice right and like everyone wants to taste apple when they drink cider perceivably unless you like are more into the market you understand it and you're going to like you're tasting more of the unique things right so like for a large like consumer market and stuff like that I think like to try and get an apple characteristic in a bone dry cider where the acid and sugar that's not really there is like in balance is like kind of a fun task and like I think we've done a pretty good job at taking it on right now and so we're pretty excited to release that. And I guess characteristic wise it's a little closer to say what some of the, the wines you offer here would be as well so it wouldn't be a hard transition for someone who's maybe not overly apple focused but still wants to, to try something. Yes exactly it's a good like little in-between step to get them their foot wet on like the cider so they come in maybe for the fruit wine they try that and then they seem more intrigued to try what's next and stuff like that so we're in the old production facility what is it that you have here sort of what is your capacity that you're doing and what are you moving towards oh right now we're doing like if you're looking at a wine kind of scheme we're like 12,000 cases and like we want to like try and at least double that the first year of our new building and like just try and like keep doubling or like I don't know we want to try and at least grow 20% after we double the first year and stuff like that and like we got a few phases of building if we get the success we want with the new building and stuff like that like our plans down the road five to ten years is to have like a 5,000 square foot barrel cellar have like a separate like facility for more like funk focused and stuff like that keep like clean commercial on one side bring all like the funk artisanal on the other side and kind of run two cellars just on like a Britannomyces standpoint. So it sounds like you're uh, you're going all in, which is, uh, this has got to be exciting, especially for someone who's just sort of joined the team and, and now is coming into a place where there's a lot of possibilities. Yeah, it is, it's pretty cool. Like, I don't know, I find it very fortunate that I've ended up here at this time, because it's like, it's the perfect time to end up here, right? Like, I don't know, I'm young and new and so is the business. And so we're both gonna grow together and expand and learn together. And I think that it's like, gonna be like, quite great and it's like I don't know we're on the rainbow right now we're just looking for the pot of gold 
I have a feeling it'll come. As you mentioned, things are growing, right? And when we got started in 2015, there was maybe 40 cideries, and our map now has us up to 80 or 90, which is is pretty intense in Ontario uh, on its own. So obviously a market that's still continuing to grow, continuing to uh, accept new products and are looking for new opportunity, which is great. Um, I wonder what's your take on that, that there's a lot more cideries coming into play, that there's a lot more offerings. Uh, do you think there's going to be sort of a seal that people are going to hit or do you think that you know at this point it'll be similar to the craft beer where the more the better because the more getting into it the more likely there'll be more drinkers I'm kind of like more in the mindset of the craft beer that I think the more the better because then we're just going to push away from like everyone always buying like these a and b and bevs nothing against those like products but like I think people need to be more aware and more like saturated by it all and so like if there's more offerings out there there's more avenue for someone to take something and like it and then like they can grow their palate from there. The consumers are getting smarter, they're learning more and like I think they want to like experience more and experience new. It's, it's going away from the guy buying like the 2-4 of blue every week in my opinion. I think it's like people want to try like a goza, people want to have like a soured beer, you know what I mean? They want to have maybe a glass of wine, and sparkling. Most people in a dinner now have like three to four different beverages over a dinner if they're having a course meal. They're not just sitting down and having like the same glass of wine the entire way through. So I think like the ceiling's a long way away, and like we're in the basement for sure right now. <laughs> we uh, we just came through the states and we found it extremely interesting that everything that was available at like grocery stores were all like four or six packs as opposed to singles. Whereas I think we have more of a you know pick and choose culture here mm -hmm. in Canada, which is is pretty neat and unique in itself. Um, you said you, you just finished the, the cider course. Can you tell me a little bit about what that entails? And if uh, someone would be interested, what is it that they would need to prepare themselves with? Uh, I like, there is no real actual formal cider course. It's just a winemaking course right now. So it's like, I've just taken a lot of my winemaking knowledge and then done some of my own reading and stuff like that. Read a lot about of Peter Mitchell and stuff like that. Tons of education there, stuff about St. Sebastian, stuff like that, about sour cedras. But like, if you understand general winemaking and you got a good background of science, but like chemistry mainly, then like you're kind of on the right mindset. But I think the coolest part about like the winemaking, cider making, beer making is that it's like you can make it an 80% art, 20% science thing, right? And I think that's like the coolest factor that you have like this ability to craft creativity from like two facets of like learning and then you can still have sustainability environmental in there as well too right so it's like you can take a lot of different like cool factors and like place it forward to one so it's like I don't know like when I went into the program I came like straight out of high school kind of thing and there was people that were in the program that were like 45 years old and been teachers and professors right and so it's like everyone's mindset on it too is completely different of where they want to take it and take the education so it's like until you get into the actual job field and make it practical, it's like, I think it's all just theory, right? And it's all just what you want out of it. I don't know. Like, it's, it's very, I don't know. It's a very cool industry to be in. Like, I don't know. I just get giddy and, like, <laughs> loss of words sometimes talking about it because it's just awesome to be a part of. And, and one of those ones where we all know it's not necessarily a nine-to-five job. There's a lot more oh, to it, yeah. but you enjoy <laughs> that experience and you, you moving towards that lifestyle, which is kind of neat and unique. Um, we're just starting our first sort of home brews. Do you have any suggestions or recommendations? You know, what would be your first key pointer to say uh, avoid a disaster or to be able to learn as much right off the top? Um, if you're going to pick up a demijohn, don't grab it by the handles. Grab the actual glass because the plastic bottoms never, never trust them. I've broken many of that before and always put nutrients in. You don't want reduction. If you think it's going to be reductive, put it in then before it gets reductive because it's a lot worse trying to work away reduction on a home scale than it is in like a commercial setting for sure. But just have fun with it too. Like don't overthink it at the end of it all, right? Like I don't know. Kind of contradict what I said prior, but <laughs> You gotta have fun with it. Thank you. Um, and I guess uh, my final question as we wrap sort of things up here is uh, where do people get more information? Where is some of your product available? Well, most of our product, like when it's coming to the more interesting stuff, right now you gotta actually come to the cidery slash winery and get it out of the growler. But going forward within like the next three to five months times, we're gonna try and like bottle condition some stuff and like have those for release as well. But local bars in either like Hamilton, Niagara, even GTA, 
they carry like the original ironwood and stuff like that. So it's always accessible there, and the original product's always accessible at the LCBO as well. Well, thank you so much, and we'll uh, we'll have some photos of the place to be able to tie along with the podcast here on the website. So appreciate your time. No problem. Thank you very much for coming.